There we go. All right. Welcome, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm also assuming uh, that one of our producers is going to be driving the screen share today. If that's not true, someone let me know. Nice. We're good to go. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, how to leverage Operations Hub, specifically from uh, sales ops and the sales persona. Um, we're going to go through a couple of examples today. And then at the tail end, we're going to do Q&A, live workshopping. If you have things you're trying to build, if you're interested in how to build them, uh, we'd love to chat with you guys about them. So please throw them in the Q&A if there's things specific to some of the uses that we go through or anything you guys are building yourselves, we'd love to talk about them. Um, for introductions on my side, I'll go ahead and go first. Uh, I'm Connor. I've been on a bunch of these. Uh, I am the CEO of Apps to Date. We're a HubSpot Elite partner that focuses on RevOps and have done a ton of work with Operations Hub. Uh, and joining us today is Ryan, uh, who leads our Revenue Operations Services team. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Uh, so in terms of what we're going to do today, so we're going to talk about uh, first, we'll do a quick recap on, on what is Operations Hub, the different tiers, functionality of, of the actual product. Uh, and then we'll talk through uh, a couple of workshops and then we would love to take your guys' questions. So again, if you have anything you guys want to talk about um, over the course of this, please, please submit it in the Q&A. Uh, we'll do some live workshopping here at the end. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, so first, we want to tell you guys a little bit around what is Operations Hub, why we think it's so significant, and why we're so excited. So uh, you may know uh, Operations Hub is the newest uh, product and hub from HubSpot um, that focuses on connecting your application, syncing and cleaning your data, and automating parts of your business process and taking workflows to the next level. Um, ultimately, the goal of Operations Hub is to extend the power of HubSpot further than what you can simply do through click and config, as well as sync some of your other systems and products um, with some of that uh, point and click configuration as well. Um, in terms of ways that, that uh, Operations Hub can be used, if you're currently a HubSpot customer or a prospective HubSpot customer, um, you can use Operations Hub to sync and clean some of your existing data inside of the HubSpot CRM. Uh, you can leverage my favorite feature, which is the custom coded programmable automation, uh, building sort of custom JavaScript code directly into your workflows, uh, also doing some data quality automation, uh, and you can use sort of different functionality on those to enhance some of your reporting capabilities as well, leveraging some of that custom code. Um, there are two, if we jump ahead one slide here, um, two different uh, current packages for Operations Hub uh, that are very different. So uh, we're going to talk about ways to use each, but there is an Operations Hub um, free, which you can have access to using some of those data sync functionalities. Um, the paid tiers, which will primarily be what we're going to talk about today. Uh, one is Starter. So Starter for Operations Hub is going to get you two-way data sync between all the supported applications. Um, I think last time we did one of these webinars, that was contacts only. Since then, it now supports companies as well. Um, doing some field mappings, historical sync, third-party integrations. And then with the Starter product, you can add custom field mappings between uh, all of your different tools. So to see those, if you go to the HubSpot app marketplace and you search under some of the data sync uh, connected products, um, the ones that say sort of built by HubSpot are going to be supported via Operations Hub. Um, you can do all of those for free. And then if you have the starter tier, you'll be able to sync some custom fields and additional items as well. Um, the next package is that professional tier, um, which is at the $800 a month. Um, that's really going to expand and let you use some of the programmable automation, extend your workflow functionality, code directly in your workflows, trigger webhooks, uh, and a lot of additional functionality on the professional side. Um, and we're going to talk through kind of uh, all of the above. So I am going to get into our first use case here. Um, this is something you're going to be able to do, I believe, entirely with Starter. But Ryan, I will hand it to you to run through this particular use case. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, clean data is arguably the most important uh, most important purpose, uh, or really a CRM to be most useful. Uh, data needs to be clean. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how formatting and how we can go through and use Operations Hub to, to clean up data, especially in situations where doing a lot of importing spreadsheets, uh, salespeople are copy pasting uh, as well into, into the CRM. So i uh, talked a little bit about just having that unreliable data. It's, it's gonna be a problem very quickly. And the larger your sales force, the larger um, the problem will, will become. So we've got a workflow configuration to help you uh, format and then enrich, uh, enrich the data. So, Step one uh, is really to go through and choose the enrollment trigger. So what part of our CRM are we going to uh, target for formatting? Is it going to be a company, a contact? Uh, do we need to format deals? Uh, and this can be something that is one time. It can be ongoing, uh, just depending on your need. You can have it just continue to rerun. 
Um, so in certain cases, we may be targeting you know, specific industries uh, as we're ramping up a, a certain you know, outbound effort. Uh, and then again, just it can be something that's recurring on a specific field that you know is very often unclean, like, next, <laughs> uh, capitalization. So for doing an outbound campaign, maybe reps are going to be uh, sending sequences. You want to make sure that contact names, as an example, uh, are formatted correctly. Last thing you want to do is look very unprofessional and sending someone an email, hey, Connor, with you know lowercase c. Um, so we can actually go through, add a step. Uh, in our workflow and select the format data uh, action. And then there are a whole host of options from uh, converting to Unix timestamps to changing date formats, uh, adding numbers, removing HTML. Uh, there's a, a long list of um, a long list of, of options here. We're going to be doing capitalization. So again, making sure uh, that that email that you send when you merge in someone's first name that it looks proper. And then one of the things to expand on that as well, just on, on your own right, yeah. I know this will this will be near and dear to your heart because I know you and I used to do these all of the time, uh, which is that you can do this right in workflow. So you can do it directly in HubSpot, uh, whether you're on the sales side or the ops side, you're probably very accustomed to exporting a whole bunch of data, throwing it into an Excel sheet, uh, updating all the different fields, re-importing it, finding out that you maybe didn't capitalize one thing or you had like an O'Shea in there uh, or any of the O'Connors and having different pieces. And so really awesome. You can do this directly in HubSpot without sort of running into uh, data limits or sort of timing out Excel for uh, those of us on, on Macs uh, as well. So really awesome that this is direct in HubSpot as well. Yeah, another, another sort of use case uh, as well while we're in the middle of this is if you're consistently sending, uh, sending any specific data, especially when it comes to dates and formatting, uh, other systems may require that a field be just a date instead of a date time, depending on you know, how it's set up in HubSpot. Um, so you can actually go and convert the format before you trigger a webhook to send it to you know, another system as well. So if we go to the next one, there we go. And then so another thing, uh, if, if if companies just using that example, if we want to go ahead and, uh, and actually have everything formatted, uh, we can do some data enrichment. So bringing in um, you know number of, of employees, some of the additional things that uh, HubSpot has uh, with their insights as well, but on, on companies, if you want to use like a Zoom info, um, you can actually bring that that right in and do it all in um, a single workflow. That's really it. Cool. Uh, so for the next one, I'll, I'll take here. So this is how you can use some of the custom coded actions. That's going to be on the Operations Hub Pro side um, for advanced deal assignments. So something that we run into uh, frequently uh, is folks that have sales teams and routing logic, whether at the contact level, the deal level, or you could even sort of extend this to some of your custom objects, which we'll talk about as well. Um, and that logic doesn't necessarily fall into as simple as uh, it's one field. So you can use just a simple if then, or perhaps you have hundreds or thousands of reps across regions and time zones and countries that you're trying to manage assignment for. And so a simple round robin just isn't powerful enough um, to manage for that deal distribution that you're trying to cover. So this example will be for reps that you have covering multiple states or zip codes or geo mapped uh, fence regions or sort of any kind of assignment that's a more complicated than if this pick list value is a specific one then assigned to a specific rep or allow you to scale that up to a large volume of users uh, as well. So if we jump ahead to the next one, I'll sort of walk through um, how you can do this piece of it. So this example would be uh, if you want to assign a deal um, based on territory criteria using an operations hub coded action. So what this will be is it'll be a workflow. So you're going to trigger this workflow every time a deal is created, or if you only want to assign these deals once it hits a specific stage, you could add filters to that or for a specific pipeline as well. Um, and so what you're going to do is, is use that coded JavaScript, hit the deals API. Um, and what you're going to fetch from that deal is the deal and the associated contacts. So what are the contacts that are associated to that deal. Um, from there, if you have a data table, so in this example, we've already loaded that up to HubDB. Um, if you have that data table in a separate system, maybe you're maintaining it just in like a, a Snowflake or Redshift, or you have it in a different uh, tool entirely that you can access via API, you could do that as well. Um, and what you're going to do is compare the contact IP location. So here's what we're going to do is it's a default HubSpot field. It's one of our favorite ones that we use uh, in a lot of different automations. But when a contact submits a form and gets 
gets created inside of HubSpot, it's going to pick up the IP location of that individual. And what you're going to be able to do then is compare, okay, so we have reps, they cover different regions, uh, and maybe we just maintain that table. So we don't need to update our workflows. We don't need to update any of our processes. We, all we need to do is update that, that table when we add a new rep or change which regions people manage. Uh, and now you can assign that deal out to the IP location of that deal's primary contact. So the main benefit of this is not only is it automated, but it's also super scalable. I know we had a customer, uh, this is probably like a year and a half, two years ago, um, and they had really complicated deal rules. And we probably spent 20, 30 hours a month every time a new rep was added or every time something else happened, we needed to go into the workflows tool, edit all of our logic, change which rules were going. And then we found out, wait, that's for a different pipeline. We have to go over here. And so you can consolidate all of that logic into one custom action uh, and using sort of like JavaScript. Um, to extend that one step further, something that we run into on occasion is, is this is especially pertinent for folks that sell either in person or have uh, regional offices or franchises. And they often have sales reps who don't just manage a state or don't just manage a particular region. They actually manage a series of zip codes or perhaps like an area that's you know within two miles of this particular office or this particular landmark. And so you could do something similar, which is when a deal is created, you could use Operations Hub and a code action to hit the Google Maps API using the prospect's address. So sort of fetching that field either from the company record or the contact, or maybe you have a custom deal field and fetch additional details. And then you could use your routing logic based off of a geofence location inside of Google Maps. So being able to sort of extend that further into the whole application, you can do a ton of automation. Um, one quick question, again, if you have things that you guys are building, please throw them in the Q and A. Uh, we're going to go through one more example and then we'll do some sort of live work workshopping on things you guys want to build. Uh, but Sandeep asked in the main chat, which is, does this only work by creating JavaScript for this specific example? Uh, and I think our next one too, we're doing examples using the coded actions inside of workflows with operations hub. And today those only support JavaScript. Um, I do know that there's, there's active work happening to extend that to other languages. Um, I can't tell you when or how that's going to happen, uh, but it's possible HubSpot folks could. Um, but right now it only works with JavaScript and you would need a developer to write uh, that, that script. The good news is, is that the majority of these workflows can be powered by point and click automation. So you can enroll people using standard if thens, you can have branches using standard HubSpot logic, and then you will need uh, that piece of JavaScript. But I think the coolest part in my opinion for some of the operations hub coded actions is that they allow you to sort of weave that development work inside of uh, tools that operations folks or anyone on the admin side can manage and turn on and turn off and enroll. Uh, but for this specific example, um, this is leveraging sort of JavaScript and APIs to power that. Uh, sounds like that answered Sandeep's question. Uh, cool. We'll go ahead and jump to our next example. Um, again, questions, uh, please, please submit them in the Q&A. We'll jump into those uh, after this last example. So Ryan, I will hand this one over to you. Yeah, absolutely. So in, uh, in certain cases where you've got uh, a specific process after something is sold, um, one common area that's usually a, a bit of a fumble and can, can eat up a lot of time is just the, the handoff, uh, taking someone who uh, was a prospect to making them a customer. So part of it internal from sales to, um, to CS and then also just actually activation. So uh, getting someone into your product, especially when you have you know, something that's based on a subscription model. Uh, so sales team usually can be, uh, can be pretty involved there, handholding, um, and just also the, the amount of time taking someone to, to get on board. Uh, so one of the things that you can do is actually connect uh, through uh, coded action. So actually connect uh, the workflow to grab that information that comes through and fire it off into, uh, into an app and actually go ahead and create the customer, get them onboarded, and start all of that uh, without any involvement from uh, from a salesperson. So if we go, uh, this is just the, the overview of the workflow, we'll talk a little bit about how this would work inside HubSpot. But um, you know, if a rep were to send a quote, uh, it gets signed, we can automatically set that deal to, to close one and then actually create that custom coded action to send the company, the related contacts and the line items, which in this case, uh, in one that we've done where, uh, where certain features that can be turned on. So all of that can get fired into, into the app. Uh, inside of the app, we can store those, those HubSpot IDs for easier reference later on uh, and have the app actually provision you know, the account, notify the, 
the new customer. And then from there, basically send information back. You can also take the information back to the company uh, and have that stored uh, again for, for easier connection later on. And then use uh, common workflow things like round robins or even uh, what Connor mentioned, like additional assignments on to, to CSM using a custom coded action uh, and even trigger like onboarding sequences. So the entire thing can be uh, completely automated so that a salesperson can just hand it off, uh, hand the quote off to, to the customer, it gets signed and everything else in the back end gets taken care of. Um, if you go, no, I think that was it actually. I think for, awesome. for some specific examples on uh, on this one is uh, we run into this for uh, activation for maybe a post-sale process. If you're trying to spin up a user account uh, inside of your app, we see this for ERP handoffs. So being able upgrades. to sort of take a customer upgrades, any type of flow. And I think every, every organization has, even if you're using every single part of HubSpot, it's likely you have other technology in and around uh, your total business stack. And so one of the main values that we love to do with Operations Hub is being able to extend that into some of those other tools and either push data to fetch data from and, and automate uh, some key processes. Yeah, I don't think this only applies to SaaS. I mean, it, it can be sending data to to your warehouse. It can be sending it really to, to any any system, and we've worked with with all kinds. Um, just again, a, a nice easy way to take the manual effort and monitoring out of it. Cool. Uh, I think we're gonna jump into questions. I saw one from Sam. Uh, I'm gonna grab this one. Oh, it looks like actually one of our. Uh, producers may have uh, pulled this in here. So this is great. Uh, if you have questions, we're going to start taking uh, individual questions. Two ways these can work. If you have a, can I do this? How does this work? Can I build this? Um, we'd also love to do live solutions design. So if you have something you're specifically trying to solve for, um, write up the spec for it uh, and we will discuss it and try to, to live uh, give you some answers to this as well. So hopefully get you started. Um, one of the first ones that I'll grab here from uh, from Sam Anderson, which is I understand a one-way custom integration is a great use case for Ops Hub. Is this faster to develop from the agency side? Curious of the business case to get clients to purchase uh, the hub. And I saw in some of your chat, you're talking about versus building sort of like a an API or something else. So I'll answer a little bit of that. And then Ryan, I'll, I'll let you sort of expand on this to whatever degree you're interested in. But I think one of the big things when we used to look at integrations um, with HubSpot and other products is in order to get data out of HubSpot, uh, you would need to have some sort of a middleware. So people would use sort of like an AWS function or have sort of a, a server or use like an ETL type tool. Uh, and that me meant you needed to add additional products into your stack or you needed to now maintain and host and, and manage a server that you're paying for. And so you need some sort of like middleware or an additional application. And so one of the main values of Operations Hub is you don't need that at all. You can build that directly inside a HubSpot. You can write that JavaScript directly inside a HubSpot, you don't need to build and maintain some additional uh, tools and, and other sort of like pieces of your overall cloud footprint to make that happen. And what that's allowed us to do is actually look to our customers and say, uh, where are you trying to get this data? How do you want to make that happen? And now we can write that script directly inside a HubSpot instead of trying to go and say, hey, we can do that, but you're going to need to build and, and sort of pay for this AWS node. I think the other benefit, if you're on the service provider side, which it sounds like you are, Sam, is that uh, either you need to pay for and maintain and manage this, this piece of middleware, um, or you have to sort of transition that to your customer. Um, and I know that we found when we would build those types of solutions, if we sort of handed an AWS uh, account to a customer with some note on it, that they couldn't manage it. They couldn't maintain it. They don't have the skills or the expertise in house. And if they forgot to pay for it, then they come ask us, Hey, this stopped working. Like what's going on here. Um, and so by building that directly in HubSpot, it just simplifies uh, that whole process. Um, it also makes it a lot easier for a HubSpot admin who doesn't necessarily know how to interact with that custom middleware, um, a lot easier for them to manage and maintain. Yeah, I was going to add on to that just to sort of simplify all the tools that we're using, it really in a very professional sense, uh, becomes less hacky, right? You're, you're keeping everything in one system, you're not using uh, paste on paste on paste of, of different products. I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's a huge benefit. I, I see questions coming in different, in two different places, but um, I'll go take this other one. Data cleanup for merges or pain husband doesn't allow you to choose which custom properties to take priority. Is this possible? Um, not exactly sure. Names alone, not. So if we're looking for matching criteria, I think is is what we're looking for. Um, right. So it's, it's to go through. I think. Yeah, I, mean, I it, think it, on. It, yeah, go yeah. for it, Ryan. <laughs> 
Go ahead. I think I was going to extend on that, which is um, operations hub is a little different than uh, the matching sort of window inside of HubSpot. Um, I think in this particular case, how operations hub may be able to, to help you is actually formatting and standardizing yeah. some of that data to then make it easier for you to do merging or uh, some of the database cleanup, whether you're doing it uh, directly inside of HubSpot or whether you're doing it using like an in cycle or one of the marketplace tools. I think the value of putting operations up at the front end is that you can standardize all of those data elements and then make it a lot easier for uh, whatever your matching process is to sort of find and connect uh, those dots. Yeah, I see another one that was actually in the chat about creating custom meeting outcomes using HubSpot. Um, so I don't see why you couldn't have workflows that set particular meeting outcomes based on uh, based on the result, um, if you want to add some yeah. details to that question, but uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely, you can you can use that depending on the on the workflow uh, and the action either from something within HubSpot or from an external system. Um, if that's that's what you're getting at, uh, then absolutely, you could you could set that. I think what could be really interesting there too uh, is you may be able to take um, sort of a engagement workflow or a workflow that runs off of uh, contact of something like last meeting uh, booked date is today. And then you could maybe go and hit uh, either external APIs or just query that contact using a coded action. And you could add more context there. And then you could detail out some type of a contact property, right? So you could go and say, okay, did this person actually come to this event? Um, were they, did they, you know, are they on the attendee list for that particular Zoom meeting ID? Uh, something that we built uh, or in the process of building for an events company right now is pulling against the um, the Zoom meetings API to check for attendees. And so you could do something similar there to then say, oh, they, they aren't an attendee on this event. So we're going to update them to, you know, no show or something to that effect, uh, which could be an interesting use case there as well. Yeah, one other thing you could also do actually is, is updating uh, with with engagements in particular uh, with data that's existing in another system. Um, so one problem that we ran into prior to Operations Hub was having to create a new engagement um, for activity in an external system um, for a host of reasons, but you could easily you know, take, ingest what, uh, what the result was from another system and go and find that exact engagement ID if you have it, and then uh, actually update, update the outcome from there. Two questions I saw in the chat that I'll speak to. I see uh, one of our producers is answering some of them in the chat as well. But for anyone wondering uh, about a recording, the recording will be available. It'll be shared. Uh, sign up on uh, the direct landing page. Make sure you have that submitted. And then the recording will be sent out to uh, everyone there. And then another one that I saw is, are we doing uh, example code for this? So the answer for that one is, is no. Um, we've done some things like that in the past. Uh, and we found that the audience isn't necessarily all developers. I would recommend checking out um, Jack. Matt Caldrick, who is somebody that we had on one of these webinars previously. Uh, he's a HubSpot solutions engineer. Um, follow him on, on LinkedIn. He has amazing lists of examples and actual like live code that's more geared for uh, the development audience directly um, that I would definitely check out. He links out to GitHub repos with sample code. Uh, lots of really, really good content um, that I would check out. Um, Question from Melissa West. So if you're still on the starter level, how do you get to the operations hub features? Um, so I believe if you're on, you need, in order to make use of some of the um, starter levels, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this question two ways because I'm not sure which one you're referring to for uh, to starter. But um, for if you're on operations hub starter, uh, the operations hub features are inside of your workflows tool. So you're going to get access to additional workflow steps. So there's like the enriched data format data actions that will show up inside of workflows. Um, additionally, uh, for the integration tools, um, you will be able to find inside of the, the app marketplace, um, the list of applications that are supported by operations hub, and you can sort of access and connect um, via uh, the, the marketplace as well. And then if you have Operations Hub Starter, um, you'll be able to access custom fields and sort of other items on those. Um, I saw you clarified you're on sales and marketing starter. So Operations Hub Starter uh, and ask your HubSpot rep for the best answer to, that, to this question, but I'll try to give you mine, which is if you're only on sales and marketing starter, uh, I'm not sure how much value um, 
I think the only the value of an operations hub starter would be you could connect it to other systems. So if you were using like Zendesk or Pipedrive or some of the other connected tools via operations hub, um, you may get value if you're doing sales and marketing because you could sync your contacts between those systems. Uh, but for the workflow actions inside of both Pro and Starter, you would need at least one professional hub um, so that you could access those pieces. Uh, I saw one here from John Peden, um, which is what is the limit of leads you can put into this app? Um, I'm not sure I know, understand that question. Uh, I would say HubSpot itself uh, does not does not have a limit that I know of. Uh, I believe I believe it's extremely high because I know we have yeah, we have active number. customers with tens of millions of records, so it's extremely high if there if there is an upper bound. I'm not sure what it is, uh, but you can put as many contacts inside a HubSpot um, as you want, uh, and then on the marketing pro side, there's sort of different costs depending on your marketing contacts, but um, you can store as many contacts as as you would like uh, inside a HubSpot. Uh, for Melissa, really looking at data cleanup options to get a fresh start. Yeah, I think um, Operation Sub is a good one. I would also check out some different marketplace applications. So we really like uh, InCycle is one that we've used. Um, I don't know if there's other ones. I know that one's just because I've talked to those guys before. Uh, if there's any that come to your mind, Ryan, but I would check out those yeah, if you can connect them to HubSpot. InCycle is definitely one. It depends on how what your data looks yeah. like, uh, for sure. I mean, Operation Sub is like an easy fix uh, in a lot of situations, especially if it's going to be ongoing. It, it'll be a little faster as well, but InCycle is also a really good tool that we use a lot. Yeah, if you connect that to your HubSpot, they have lots of sort of cleanup and other places. Um, and then Operation Sub has good data formatting. I think I think you could do... Uh, both of those, they, they'd potentially help. Um, and that should be able to get you uh, reasonably started. Uh, we went through a bunch of q and I know we're moving quickly. Uh, if anyone Another else has anything else, about please. About the internal cool. referral system. There's actually a really good blog article. I can find it on building referral system. Yeah, we actually, so Rahul, we've done some of this. I'll speak to it and then I'll let yeah. Ryan maybe find the article that Ryan we can share. It, so yeah. Rahul's question is, uh, the other thing we're trying to build internally inside of HubSpot is a referral system. So the problem is referred by can be a text field, but need a way to link it like deals and contacts are linked on the right side. So what we've done um, is we've actually built a custom object uh, for referral. Um, and then we're, we're, we originally were using coded actions. We actually, we built uh, an app, which is a little bit different. I'll, I'll put the link in here. I won't talk about it too much. Um, but we basically, we were doing this frequently enough that we built just like a, a standalone application for it um, called Associate, which allows you to sort of link records based off of unique IDs. I'll throw the link to that in the chat. Um, but I, what we're doing, so for that action, you could do it with coded automation as well is if a custom object is created. Uh, so we're using that referral object and then we have a workflow. So when a contact submits a form um, and they have a field that's like put in the email of the person you're referring, they submit that. And then we create a custom object uh, called referral. And then we use um, our application for associate, but you could do the exact same thing uh, with, a, with a coded action to go look up a contact inside the system that has that email address for the referred contact. And then we link both of those contacts to the referral object. And then we populate uh, the referee. Uh, I, I hate referrals because the language is incredibly confusing. Uh, but we, we put the referee and the referrer uh, on two contact or two uh, custom object properties. And then you can report on those custom objects and you can show how many people have people referred, uh, who's the highest referring uh, individual, uh, and you can do all of that off the custom object report, um, which is super cool. Um, so we're doing that for a couple of customers right now, actually. Um, and I think, Ryan, you found that article as well. Yeah. Cool. There's also an article in the chat uh, that you can check out that has um, a really good use case of that that I think includes some example code um, oh yeah, it's got example, example code. code. Yeah, some, it's, great. Just, it's high level. And there's there's a couple other examples on enriching data as well, and so about an email address. So using external services, uh, as as we talked about, obviously a big big use case for, uh, for operations hub. I think Jack Caldrick also wrote that one. Jack's awesome. I'd follow him on LinkedIn. He's great. We really like him. He's a good he's a good guy. Uh, we've done a couple of these with him. Uh, any any other Q and A uh, questions? Chat other items from other folks. We're also happy to just continue to talk to specific people. 
Um, I have one here for Sam. So I've heard an example to give greater context in the last touch before a sales deal. Can you talk a little? Oh, I so can talk more about this. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> we do this all the time. So Sam's question is, uh, heard of an example to give greater context in the last touch before a sales deal. So this is one that um, we, so our demand generation team uh, runs into all of the time uh, and we get asked. So what we've done is, and we're doing this on some custom coded actions, uh, follow, su subscribe to like, if you subscribe to me on LinkedIn, Sam, it's very likely we'll have an app purpose built for this at some point in the near future uh, that we'd love to get your input on as well. Uh, but we sort of have it strung together in a couple of portals right now. So what we're doing uh, and is very cool um, is using a custom coded action. So this would be uh, when a deal hits a certain stage. So in your example, it could be closed one, but you could use the same logic here for deal create as well. So uh, maybe you want to go fetch what the interaction was prior to a deal getting created. And so what we're doing is when a deal is marked close one, uh, we're using a coded action to hit the deals API and grab the list of associated contacts. Um, and then we're going and taking those contacts and we're going and checking what was the last marketing engagement that they did prior to that deal being marked closed one. So if you have one contact, maybe you want to go pull it and say, and you, you could filter this down if you only want to look at uh, web visits or emails, or you could say, I, I want to include everything. Um, and what was the last thing that they interacted with prior to uh, actually becoming a closed one deal? And then that coded action is going and updating that deal record with some sort of a tag informed by those values. So something we have a customer that's doing is they want to know, was it uh, the last thing before a deal closed? Was it that they downloaded an ebook? Did they come to a webinar? Did they like, what were the things? And they have specific sort of, they have long sales cycles. So their behavior is largely how can I influence deals down the pipeline? Um, and so we can go and grab that piece of information and then stamp the deal with either the campaign name of that particular asset, or maybe it's just the name of the asset or a link or whatever sort of you want to use. Uh, but what that lets them do is they can actually look at all of their deals and say, which categories are driving these deals to get to closed one uh, while they're in flight. And we're doing, you can do something similar for uh, when the deal's created, when the deal hits proposal stage or whatever you sort of want to filter by. Um, but that's a really good example of where you can use coded automation to go grab data from inside of HubSpot that you can't necessarily just grab with like a standard workflow um, and then stamp it onto the deal. And so you can do really advanced reporting uh, on some of those. And what you can do then is you can just use a deal report. So instead of trying to sort of combine the campaigns tool, all the marketing tools, all of the different deal reporting, just try to string that together. You can just run a deal report and, and show in a column uh, what was the last touch channel um, for these deals uh, and report on that. But that's a really good use case that um, we we have done a couple of times. I see two other questions. Uh, solution of duplicate records. I think we touched on this a little bit in, in the chat. Um, duplicate records to import from multiple sources. I, I think one of the, the easy things that you can do, even though it won't necessarily be for duplicate cleanup, is identification of, of duplicates. So if you wanted to do a lookup um, you know, on, on Create, we can look for some similar, like uh, an address or, or name if we wanted to do some sort of matching and just mark that contact or company for deletion. Um, that's definitely something that we can do, but typically you, you want to handle um, deduping before it comes into the system, I think would, would make your life a lot easier. Uh, but certainly if you wanted to go through and check uh, and mark certain people based on whatever the matching criteria is, you could definitely run that. Uh, and then the, the I, other question- I, Wait, yeah. let, me, let me jump on that one as yeah. well. So there's uh, HubSpot has a duplication tool. The data sync on the HubSpot operation side is, is less of a deduplication uh, platform. So there, there's already another uh, deduplication functionality um, inside of HubSpot. I'll, I'll pop this one to the chat. The other one that we would recommend checking out, feel free to, to tell them we sent you their way. We know these guys pretty well, um, is InCycle. Um, they're a marketplace application uh, that does really awesome uh, deduplication and rules and merging and logic in the marketplace. And it's um, they're pretty inexpensive. I know we use them across uh, a whole bunch of different records. They're the, the base tier on their website says free. So I'm sure as you slide that up in terms of number of contacts, it gets, it gets more expensive, but uh, they're, they're great. Uh, highly recommend, feel free to tell them that, that we sent them your direction, but um, check out InCycle. I put the link in the chat um, for, for that one, but for a deduplication tool um, for those pieces. 
let's see. The other question I have involvement between passing sales types uh, from business development executive to business development manager. I'm not sure if you mean the handoff between uh, from one rep to another, like scheduling calls. Uh, but yeah, certainly if that's uh, recording who the previous rep was and changing owners, um, yeah, and certainly that could definitely be done. I, I think you could do most of that through actually a regular a regular workflow. If you want to expand a little bit on that on that particular question, uh, I'd be happy to shed some more light on it though. Um, do we have any there in the chat? No, oh, that's not a question. Yeah, I'm scrolling through. Uh, yeah, Let's see if we missed anything. Sandy, if you have a clarification, we can touch on that one more. I think our answer would be yes, uh, we've had involvement between uh, passing between business development executive and business development manager, uh, but I'm not sure what else to expand on beyond uh, a yes on that one, but we'd be happy to touch on it more for sure. Anything else from any of our attendees? Uh, oh, Sandeep says, once owner has changed, we're unable to see uh, who the previous owner is. Uh, yeah, so there's two ways you could do this, actually. You you could use Operations Hub, I, I guess. this. I actually don't think you would need to. So if you used a um, standard HubSpot workflow, you could actually stamp uh, the owner into like a previous owner field uh, and sort of copy that value uh, one to the other. Um, if you could not do that with the standard workflows, which may be true because owner fields are weird uh is you could use operations hub to do the same thing so you could you could hit the hit the record um grab the owner and then paste the owner into a field and if you wanted uh and you could do this with operations hub which is if you wanted to have three or four um previous owner field so like previous owner one previous owner two something like that um you could use operations hub to say go find out when like right before you change the owner go find who the owner is find out it, like which previous owner fields are populated and then paste uh the name of that person or the email or whatever you want into that field uh, and it could sort of like roll through a list of properties but you could do that with an operations hub uh workflow for sure and i think you can do it with the standard workflow ryan you would be closer to it but maybe not close enough i don't yeah, I, yeah. I just know user properties are weird yeah, we've had situations where certain fields and history is extremely important. They want to report on it as well. Uh, in, in a really extreme example, you could even store some of that information in a custom object if you need need that history like readily accessible as well. That's Amy, Amy came to the rescue here. Uh, Amy Riodica says uh, you can copy and paste the previous owner without ops hub at the yeah. moment, which I think I think is true. So you should be able to do that there as well. Uh, Melissa asked, please confirm InCycle is the app you mentioned earlier for data yes. cleanup. It is. Yeah, it uh, is. we. We like them. They're great. Uh, if you should be an email, I put my email in the chat. I'd be happy to introduce you directly to the folks over there too. Um, and uh, we'd be happy to help you. Um, Sam, any limitations so far? Ops Hub can do anything as long as the data exists somewhere in HubSpot. Um, yes, it is Honestly, the answer. There yeah. are, yeah, there, there are some limitations. So I'll, I'll talk about two um, that I know the team is, is actively working on um, that we've run into that are, that are worth touching on. So one is on the operations hub starter. Um, Syncing a field supports primarily text values. So there's, there's issues when I know we have a customer who has like a, a drop down and a pick list um, is. Uh, not able to sync from dynamics into HubSpot. So like one answer could be, you know, paste that dynamics pick list value into a text value inside of dynamics and then sync that one over. Uh, in their particular case, they're a massive multinational organization and, and adding uh, a text field to dynamics is uh, an incredibly difficult thing to do. Uh, so that didn't work quite well for them. Uh, but the um, that that's one sort of Thing on the operations hub starter that's limited there's definitely workarounds um on the pro side uh if you can write that custom code there are compute compute time limitations uh they're pretty high we haven't run into a lot of them but if you have a serverless function that's running for you know uh i think it's like i don't know it's also it's also hard because if you explain seconds in terms of computation time it doesn't really mean anything uh because computers are very fast yeah. uh there's, but a, there's it, a period of time there is an upper bound there's, yeah there's, there's an upper bound of compute yeah, time so if you have like a 
a circuitous function um, or sort of a loop. Uh, you could theoretically time out um, your serverless function, but that that's to help you as opposed as opposed to hurt you because if it ran indefinitely, it would be uh, no bueno. Um, but the that's a limitation. The other one that we've run into um, that you can currently anything that's triggered inside of HubSpot, um, you can run an operation sub action on. So um, what that means is like if a, you can't send a webhook from another system and push it into HubSpot, and you can't take like when someone checks out in my Amazon store, uh, I want these things to happen in HubSpot because the coded action has to get triggered from HubSpot. So HubSpot has to have the logic that says to go get it. So we've solved that in two ways. Um, one is essentially building uh, like batch classes inside of HubSpot, basically. So you'd have two workflows that trigger each other. So one would be update this contact property to yes, and then run this coded action action. And then at the end of the workflow, update it to no. And then the next workflow could say, wait one hour, uh, run this coded action and then update that contact property to yes. And then they basically hand each other back and forth. And then you could build an hourly batch or a nightly batch that way where each coded action goes and fetches data from another system. So you could sort of have like a triggered sync that way, even if the data is not happening, or even if the event. Ryan's like looking up. So he's like, oh, this is cool. Uh, so my, my sole goal in life is impressing Ryan uh, with all of these operations of stuff. Um, but you could do those sort of those the back and forth um, yo-yoing of those workflows. That's one solution. Um, the other solution is in CMS Hub Enterprise. So if you're on an enterprise bundle, uh, this is a really cool way that you can build some really sophisticated stuff, which is CMS Hub Enterprise has uh, serverless functions, um, which you can point webhooks at. So if you have a webhook firing from another system uh, to HubSpot, it's not an operations hub feature. Uh, please tell the product team that it should be. I tell them all of the time, uh, but uh, it's not an operations hub feature, but um, you can access serverless functions inside of CMS Enterprise and uh, those can receive webhooks. So you could do sort of a bi-directional uh, call and response framework between HubSpot and another system. If those actions are triggered from somewhere else, send a webhook to HubSpot, serverless function receives them, and then a coded action sends some data uh, back as well. I just talked for a really long time. I, I hope that that was followable and I apologize uh, if I learned a bunch of information and a bunch of folks. Um, we're gonna give another like 30, so oh, cool, you know, we got another sure. question. Um, so from Amy, copy and pasting date fields to different date field properties break in regular workflows. Doesn't actually copy the date. It's sometimes one day ahead or behind um, in ops workflow. Does this work in ops hub? So one of the functions of ops hub is uh, copying um, and, and sort of uh, matching date properties okay. or other properties between systems. Um, what I do know is with starter uh, at launch, there were some limitations on date fields. I do not know with absolute certainty if those have been patched. Um, really good question for uh, your, uh, your HubSpot um, rep. But I think that the, the answer is with a coded action, 100%, because uh, you can essentially do anything you want. Um, whether or not that's in starter, um, I'm not 100% sure, but um, that is a, a use case for, for operations hub. So even if it's something that isn't in there yet, uh, I would anticipate it would be in there in pretty short order um, as well. But uh, I'm not 100% sure on that one, Amy. There's Ooh, another question one. about uh, using code actions to copy line items. Uh, so one of the it's an extraordinarily common use case that, that comes up um, doing anything really with line items. So converting line items to, <clears throat> in some cases, uh, custom objects, uh, the, the equivalent of, of assets. Um, but yes, uh, absolutely that you can do that. So if you need to take uh, specific line items and turn them into something else, whether that's line items on a specific deal, um, yes, you can, you, can, you can definitely do that. Yeah, that's one that um, we've done a couple of times. Uh, another one that's similar in a use case is actually using an operation subcoded action too. So we have a customer that uses line items for um, service lines. So basically like for each indistinct service line, they would have one line item and then whatever the quantity is. Um, and so we're using an operation subcoded action to actually generate tickets for each line item. So when that deal goes to closed one, we're going and grabbing all those associated line items generating tickets for each line item. So one ticket per line. item. I think that they have a pipeline 
for each one as well, but that's not super yeah. relevant. Um, and then they're generating a ticket and then they're moving those tickets uh, along so that that way they can have a seamless handoff from sales to actual like implementation and service delivery uh, by then managing tickets as that post-sale object. Uh, and that's essentially the exact same process um, as copying a deal with those line items as well. Uh, business units. Uh, I'm happy to speak a little bit about business units. Business units are not uh, a part of sort of the operations subside. I think it's just an enterprise and some of the other tools. Uh, but business units let you uh, segment out data inside of HubSpot um, in a bunch of different ways. So you can control uh, what people can access, what people can see, what they can edit, uh, and you can structure that in terms of different business units. You can host and support multiple brands, so if you have a, I know we have a customer right now who has a, uh, for health supplements, they have a pet line and then they have a um, people line, uh, I guess. Uh, and so the business units allows them to sort of like represent both of those in the same uh, the same hub, uh, same portal. Um, and so that's what business units are for. I think that that's an enterprise feature. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, I don't think it's inside of operations hub, but uh, is another one we're excited about. I actually think we're going to do content around that uh, and then in the coming months, um, but cool. One, one other, yeah, question about HubSpot being different, uh, and apps compared to the rest of the CRMs in the market. I, I don't know that this applies to operations sub specifically, but, um, I think ex expandability with operations sub makes it, uh, makes it pretty powerful. I, I think just on the whole, obviously there are positives and negatives uh, to every system that we're not really necessarily going to get into, but. I think one thing that makes HubSpot really great is just one continued expansion development, listening to, to users. And then uh, certainly Operations Hub uh, is part of this, just user experience as well. So making sure that people can actually use the product versus um, making something extraordinarily complicated that no one can ever figure out. And, and I think HubSpot does a really good job, even with the inclusion of Operations Hub, of keeping, forcing you to kind of keep things clean and usable as well. I think that that is all of our questions. Um, thank you guys so, so much for coming and attending. Uh, connect with us on LinkedIn. Feel free to follow our content, ask us questions. Um, we love talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, and then you can send Ryan or I an email with any questions you may have, projects you guys directly are working on. Um, we'd be delighted to see if we can help directly or just point you in the right direction. Uh, and thank you guys so, so much for, uh, for coming. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye, everybody.